Welcome to the Air Gun Show. We've got another ram-packed episode for you this week, including a roundup of new gear from the Iwa Show in Germany and a tutorial on how to use hold over and hold under to keep your shots on target. But before that, Stuart Wilson is out pitting his wits against some crafty corvids. Well, this is uh, another attempt to try and get some of these carrions or, or magpies. Um, there's a pair of carrions on here. Um, I think it's the female that's got the, the white in her wings. Um, she's dotting around with a, um, a large, large male. They seem to be almost like the dominant pair on here. They can get quite territorial sometimes. You can see them occasionally when another pair's here, they'll sort of swoop on them and basically trying to get them off what they deem has been their area. Um, it sometimes makes them a little bit competitive when the, when the food is actually out there, which I've been using just slices of white bread, just trying to put two out. But what I have found is that when, when there's a solid slice of bread there, if he or she can get onto it and pick it up, they will actually fly off with it. If it's too floppy and they can't get the whole slice, they'll break it into pieces get as much into their beak as they possibly can and then they've been flying off with it, eating it out of range. They're kind of sort of used to me sort of being here and you know they're not obviously that comfortable with my presence obviously thinking that I'm maybe going to shoot these things. For all I haven't shot at this pair. Um, whether they've received any, any pressure from another land, again they're not stupid. You see these things when they when they walk into the to the feed. If they're not sure they'll land right out and then they'll slowly walk their way in. And one of the things that was interesting on some of the footage that I looked at the other day, she, or it, the, one of the crows basically lands out there. And you can see, as I sort of scrub through the, the footage on fast forward, if my peak is her beak, it's just like her head side to side, constantly like this is the head, looking round, looking for everything as she's coming in. Um, so, you know, these things don't miss a trick. And I spent, what, two or three days trying to dab these things without any camouflage netting across the front of this door. Um, and every movement, again, it's difficult enough shooting these things. Um, granted, it's, it's a challenge and it's good fun. Um, but then adding into that, trying to actually film these things, because, you know, I don't have a, a cameraman sat over my shoulder. I would film these myself. I'd put a little remote camera out and try and sort of control that with a with a remote monitor so I can see what it's looking at and set it recording as I go. The other morning it was really, really foggy um, and you could see in the oak tree one of the crows sat there almost like on sentry. It'd be about sort of 10ish in the morning, it wasn't an early an early day, an early uh, early hunt rather. Um, just sort of meandered down, chucked some bread out and away I went. As I tried to throw the bread out the bread broke up, so I had to then get through the gate and put it out, so I had several little pieces of bread. The downside was the small pieces of bread they could pick up, and one of the crows did actually come in. <laughs> picked it up straight away and then they never did get back that day um, before I'd left I had an appointment in town that I had to go to and um, then when I come back obviously all the all the bread's gone um, so you know that big oak tree they can see me walking down the garden and getting into the shed and they know damn well I'm here um, so the challenge is getting in here when there's no sentry in the tree get the bread out 
so that they're used to eating the bread and then sneak into here without them knowing I'm here and then when they are walking in and watching trying not to glint whether it be off my face my hands or or the gun so today I have gloves and I have face mask ready to go as well as the camouflage netting across the front so if I don't get anything today I'll give in Right, it's time to get on with things. Time's ticking on. Uh, I've got my bread out, um, I've got my camouflage net, so I'll get the camo veil on. And then get my gloves on. And then hopefully, if anything shows up, I shouldn't really I'm giving myself definitely the best chance because uh, these their eyesight's absolutely phenomenal. I'll just get loaded up. Keep our m movements to a a bare minimum and uh, hopefully something will show up. And the other day on here, um, when I was filming, I had some, some, some bread out and one of the crows was in the area um, and I'm sure again it was the, the white female that swooped down and the other one sort of ducking and getting out of the way and then she then jumped in and grabbed a full slice of bread in her mouth and then proceeded to sort of march off with it, followed by the crow that she'd just swooped on as well. Finally, first carrion down. There you go, an absolutely ballistic out there. I'm sure there's pretty much everything that you could expect there. There's carrion crows out there. I even think there's some jackdaws out there. There's been a group of seven mooching about on the odd day. And I think there's, there's magpies as well. I'm sure I can hear magpies as well. Um, 
about half an hour now and nothing's nothing's come back. Um, I don't think it necessarily helps with the fact that there's a couple of couple of dead crows out there. I'm fairly sure that's the white winged one that's one of the you know one of the most territorial round here. And then there's a magpie and they're both laid on their bellies from what I can see. Um, sorry, one's laid on its belly and the other one's flipped over. I think I'm sure the magpie's flipped over and onto its back from what I can see here. My visibility is not fantastic from here. Um, but yeah, I would say that's probably going to be it. Um, I'm going to have to give these another go at another point, but uh, I'm absolutely capped there of getting a, a couple of really difficult call vids. That's it. I'm going to get these, these picked up um, and give it a, another go another day. Um, Broke up compatter there in 2-2, two -two. Um, certainly nailed those two um, corvids nicely, put them down with authority. Um, I'm shooting at about 20 yards here, um, deliberately sort of baiting to a spot so I can get them nicely within range. It's not taken me three solid days, but it's been a few sessions and, you know, they've shown within two, three, four minutes on an odd occasion. And the slightest little movement from me or glint of anything when I haven't had it quite right, I haven't been doing it right basically and they're off and that's it and you don't get a shot so it's been a bit of a learning curve but it's been very enjoyable and I'm capped about getting that to uh, carry on with the white wings Stuart Wilson there proving that he isn't the bird brain we all thought he was and now it's time for an air gun show news special from the Ewa show in Germany this is the Egg and Show News. Tonight, we bring you a special report from Ewer in Germany. Every year, the greats of the gun trade descend on Nuremberg to show off their latest and greatest products. We were there to see what's new for air gunners. First off, German air gunning giant Umarex, who had a new version of the ultra popular Rotex RM8. This here is a very popular Rotex Varmint. Varmint is a new uh, version that we offer since this year. Uh, the Varmint series is a polymer stock, which is very rugged, and a thumb hole stock, just for hunting. It doesn't scratch like the, the more valuable uh, uh, wooden stocks. And uh, in the Rotex version, it has an additional short Picatinny rail on front to mount lamps where they are allowed. And one difference to the uh, normal Rotex series is a different muzzle brake, which can be removed and replaced by a silencer. And we have that same stock available with a lot of other new models. The guru behind FX. Frederick Axelson showed us the super adjustable new Crown rifle. This is the new FX Crown and uh, it is a fantastic rifle, it's packed of features. You have a power adjuster in the back which is adjusting the hammer spring. You have a power adjuster here which is uh, adjusting the transfer port in three steps. We have full shrouded barrel. We have a super big magazine, 18 shots. We have adjustable regulator from the outside and you can change the caliber quickly. You can have either 177, 2225 or 30 caliber. The shroud is actually telescopic so you can push it out and lock it there and the gun is going to be super quiet. If you don't want to use it, you can actually lock it. I want to explain a little bit more about the barrel because the barrel is a completely new system. Um, we call it the liner uh, system. So you can basically take the liner out and replace it with slower twist rate, higher twist rate, more choking, and whatever you want. Cometer's Orion Bullpup was compact to begin with, but they've managed to shave off even more length and weight. We are displaying this year a new, new mini Bullpup, okay? The dimensions are very, 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 very short. It's very, very portable, light, and very, very easy to, to shop. A new stock, the grip, so here, but the, the stock, the safety, and the quick fill, the foster quick fill connector. 
it is developing 16 jolts, 16 jolts, 12 feet pounds for the English market. For the English market, the autonomy could be about 80 shots. Okay, and I think it's, it would be a very, very good product for the English market. Everybody is using 12 feet pounds. You have enough autonomy, and I think it would be. I don't know. We are very happy with this model this year. Firox's new HW44 pistol turned a lot of heads and looks set to go down a storm when it reaches UK gun shops via Hull Cartridge Company. The pre-charged fistful of fun boasts a 10-shot magazine and several shared features from the HW110 rifle. Ivanix continue to push the boundaries of air gun design and this time it's in the shape of the Cloud bullpup. This is called the Cloud. It's, it's bent right, as you can see, and then uh, it's a side lever action, easy to poke and uh, shoot it. And then uh, it has a carbon wrapped tube, bent right. It's available at UK Power. All eyes were drawn to the new Crossman Benjamin Trail Stealth and its distinctive asymmetrical silencer. So this is the Benjamin Trail Stealth, so it's our latest uh, Benjamin rifle and it has a very particular design on the stock and it comes with the Picatinny rail and we have developed a brand new silencing system called the SPD so it's an asymmetrical um, um, silencer so you don't have the volume it's, it's below the rifle and it's extremely silent it's all made in US it's the uh, NP2, so it's the second generation of gas ram system and it's e extremely silent um, so the, the guy shooting it at the range, they, they say they can actually hear the pellet leaving uh, because there is no noise from the gun anymore. So this is basically our high-end uh, brake barrel rifle that competes with uh, PCP stuff. The Crow Puncher Armour isn't an egg and that's likely to go unnoticed on the racks. Apart from protecting the action and barrel from knocks and scrapes, that bright armor casing also incorporates lots of clamping space for Picatinny fit accessories. And finally, we got to see the high-powered version of Daystate's flagship electronic rifle, the Pulsar. We hit the Daystate stand with a new Pulsar High Power. So this is a high-power version of the gun we brought out uh, just a couple of years ago. And originally it was available in 177 and 22 calibre, up to 30 foot pounds. 35 foot pounds we could push it out to. Well, this one starts at 50 foot pounds and goes up to a cool 70 foot pounds in 30 calibre. So, yes, you can have a 30 calibre Day State Pulsar. Same rifle, slightly longer barrel, shrouded of course, electronic action, electronic trigger with a built in laser if you want to use that as range finding or camp information. This is the new Daystate Pulsar High Power. That's all we've got time for from EWA. That was the Egan Show News. In the last show we looked at the basics of scope zeroing and I touched on using hold over and hold under to compensate for the pellet's curved trajectory. This is a really important concept to understand because it doesn't matter how accurate your air gun is if you don't know how high or low your pellet is striking at whatever range you're shooting over. Although it's easy to slip into the trap of regarding the pellet's flight path as being a straight line, it's actually very far from that. This curved trajectory is caused by gravity in the vertical plane and wind in the horizontal plane. Its extent is governed by factors including muzzle velocity, pellet weight and wind strength. Starting with vertical trajectory and working from a zero range of around 30 yards, the general rule of thumb for sub 12 foot pound air guns is that the pellet will strike low at very close range because it emerges from the barrel a couple of inches below the line of sight. The pellet then crosses the line of sight at around 15 yards so the point of impact corresponds with your crosshairs. It then rises, peaking at around 20 to 25 yards before gravity pulls it back down to the zero you dialed in at 30 yards. Gravity then continues to pull the pellet down, first gradually and then more steeply until it falls to the ground. 
By establishing how high or low the pellet is at any given range, you can then use the aim points on your scope's reticle to give shots hold over or hold under to compensate for that curved trajectory. Of course, measurements vary from setup to setup, but it's easy enough to work it out for your combo by shooting groups of pellets at paper or cardboard targets over a variety of ranges. The way I do this is to set out targets at 5 yard intervals between 10 and 40 yards or more depending what range I'm planning to use that setup over. By shooting groups of 3 or 4 shots at each target you can then see how high or low the point of impact is at each range. Once you know where the pellet is striking you simply use the correct aiming point for that range to give the shot the right amount of hold over if it's hitting low or hold under if it's hitting high. This should ensure that your shots are always on target. With first focal plane scopes, the relationship between the reticle and the target remains the same as you wind the magnification up or down. Therefore, your aiming points also remain the same. With second focal plane scopes, which most air gun scopes tend to be, that relationship shifts as you zoom in and out. The way to get around this is either to leave the magnification on the same setting or to work out your aiming points at different magnifications if you do intend to wind it up or down. The point of impact will also shift at different angles of elevation and you need to know the distance to your target to be able to give shots correct hold over or hold under. It's useful to practice doing this by eye but a laser rangefinder provides a fast and accurate means of establishing distance out in the field. Working out horizontal aim off to compensate for the wind is somewhat trickier because wind speed is difficult to estimate and it can come from any angle. Nick Jenkinson gave us a great tutorial on judging the wind in one of our episodes from last year and I'd certainly recommend that you watch that. Whether you want to master aim off for gravity or the influence of wind, the best way to get to grips with it is to familiarise yourself with just how your combo performs in a variety of different conditions. Put in the practice with your chosen setup and you should soon have your shooting bang on target. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership.